Good day, everybody. Rob here at westernpacificweather.com. A very, very dangerous situation out there today with Tropical Cyclone Yasi right now. It's currently about 12.30 local Queensland time here on the 2nd of February uh, 2011. And as I just stated, we have this Tropical Cyclone Yasi making landfall within the next 8 to 12 hours here along the Queensland coast. Looking at landfall likely around uh, 2200 uh, Queensland time here, right just south of of uh, cans around the Innisfail area here. Uh, we are going to be talking about the track here in just a second, but we're actually going to look into this uh, current state of this storm, how it continues to rapidly intensify, actually passing just north of Willis Island last night. The eye wall was visible on radar imagery. Cannot pull up that radar imagery anymore, though, since after the storm passed, the equipment got knocked out on that radar. So just for uh, showing you the uh, massive intensity coming out of this system, knocking out the radar equipment out on that island there. But here showing you the most uh, recent enhanced close-up visible imagery on this system. Very, very well-defined eye wall in here with a wide open eye. Now, one thing I do want to note, if you go through this eye wall and you're out open in this eye, it's going to take possibly about a half an hour to an hour to pass your location. So even though the winds uh, die down rather rapidly after the eye wall passes, always be aware that that storm is going to re-emerge from the other side here. So uh, it's a very, very intense system. Within this eye wall, you see these higher cloud tops right in here. Current winds uh, from JTWC actually showing uh, about 125 gusting up to 150 knots. That is super typhoon strength for uh, if you're up in the northern hemisphere the equivalent of that a category 5 cyclone immensely strong you do not see these too often down in the southern hemisphere here actually this is directly quoted again from the Bureau of Meteorology this impact is more life-threatening than any experienced in recent generations uh, from the storm so that's straight off their most recent uh, update the uh, tropical cyclone advice so please take this seriously if you are in any uh, low-lying areas immediately close to the coast and not under in a mandatory evacuation already take it seriously get inland get away from the coast the storm surge from the system is going to be very strong and here showing the one of the most recent microwave imagery showing that eye wall enhanced in here if you notice in the last several days this is only very sparse but on these some of these most me recent microwave imagery you can really see this well-defined eye eye wall outer rain bands very intense out here actually seeing some of the rain bands already making landfall on the uh, radar here here along the coast here so this system still very strong it continues to intensify as it moves through the coral sea here and continues to pose a very strong threat for the coast here just showing you another uh, form of microwave imagery here uh, just showing overall this intensification these higher cloud tops out here so especially if you're on the southern periphery of this eye wall at landfall that's where the worst is going to be taking place systems moving actually rather quick at about um right now 18 knots so if you have a one 125 knot wind plus that 18 knots along that southern periphery you're going to have even stronger winds than possibly that max intensity so one thing I do want to know if you're in that left front quadrant a very very dangerous situation right there and here showing you the current radar out of Cannes, showing some of these uh, outer rain bands coming through the Innisfail area all the way up towards Cannes, and even down in uh, Townsville seeing some of these outer rain bands moving through the area here. Also just noting uh, just offshore while I'm at it here, uh, talking about Flinders Reef here, uh, currently showing some winds there about 100 gusting to 128 knots out there. So uh, already confirming some of these max sustained winds are very, very high, and this is not even near the uh, center of the uh, storm right now so uh, one thing I do want to know on this radar imagery as well I noted this yesterday and you know, quite a few people were kind of surprised with this is with these land falling tropical cyclones and typhoons hurricanes all over the world when you have these start to interact with the land you get this uh, temperature difference and you get the very highly uh, probability of tornadoes forming up in these outer rain bands usually they're weak only about the EF1 EF2 intensity but they're very fast moving and they're always very rain shrouded so they're hard to spot and they come at you quick so as far as picking them up on Doppler radar it's actually exceptionally hard and storm potters storm spotters also have an exceptionally hard time spotting these so uh, really keep an eye out for these uh, basically um, don't go outside once these outer rain bands come through even if it doesn't seem too strong remain indoors if you are in any of these areas even farther inland remain indoors away from these outer rain bands as well even though the center and the core of the storm still doesn't pass there still is that potential for 
the tornado threat. In here showing the GTWC warning on the system that is the Joint Typhoon Warning Center out of Pearl Harbor. Uh, sh currently showing those winds at 125 gusting around 50 knots with uh, maxing out 130 gust to 160 just prior to landfall. So that's the equivalent of a Category 4 hurricane, Super Typhoon, and now a Category 5 cyclone in the Southern Hemisphere. I use all those phrases to just kind of wherever part of the world you're from you can get the overall intensity and kind of uh, register how strong this system is here. Uh, just, uh, overall track though has shifted slightly to the south here, uh, about 20 to 30 nautical miles uh, away from Cairns, uh, actually just south of Innisfail area. Actually, if we show you the Bureau of Meteorology track, you can uh, kind of get where this uh, storm's going to be making landfall just north of Cardwell here, uh, just south of Innisfail. Still, uh, Cairns and uh, Townsville within that tropical cyclone winds. That's uh, winds of uh, 50 to 64 knots or greater. You still have the max intensity near the center here, but destructive winds still extend very far out here. Even down clear near Mackay and far north of Cairns here, you're still going to have those destructive winds, those tropical storm force winds or greater. So that's one of the major concerns here. Another thing is the overall size of the system. You're going to have rainfall very far inland, all the way past Richmond out here. Intense rainfall in some of these areas that don't need any more rainfall. Uh, any places in these watersheds here near the coast where all these rains are going to gather in the coming days would not be expected or would not be surprised to see some flash flooding due to a lot of this rain coming down river eventually into those major watersheds. So that's kind of after the fact. Right now though, biggest concern is going to be these storm surges near the coast. Also the mass amount of rainfall, those tornadoes with the outer rain bands and this high wind near the core of the system. About 130 gusts, 150 knots at landfall. And here I actually want to quickly show you this chart. Uh, I keep on saying low vertical wind shear is going to increase the, the storm strength. Well that's basically the surface to upper level the difference in wind shear. And right here only seeing 5 to 10 knots of a difference in wind shear that is perfect uh, ingredients for this system to continue form up. Actually, if you look at the sea surface temperature as well, right here, uh, the placement of the tropical cyclone is a little old, but if you look farther out towards the west where it currently is, sea and sea surface temperatures above 85 to 90 degrees out here. So it's a very hot stew for the system to continue to develop in even all the way up towards uh, landfall here as all that Latin heat from that moisture on the surface continues to get wrapped up in the storm. And here showing this Google Earth image uh, of the storm here, you have Innisfail here, uh, Cairns up here, Townsville down here, and uh, Codwell right in this region right here. And the big thing I want to know is that storm surge, I've already said about it, and showing the overall size of the system over 500 kilometers across. So if you uh, start basically from here, uh, all the way off screen here and all the way up to where it is now. That's what we call a fetch area, this entire area here. And that's the amount of distance this water is actually being pushed uh, against the, or with the wind here. And that's all going to be built up along the coast here. And that's why Bureau of Meteorology and all these, uh, you keep on hearing reports of a massive storm surge. Well, that's why. It's not so much the winds that are coming out of the system, but the amount this wind is traveling across the ocean. On top of that, uh, uh, the overall pressure of the system expects you to get down down to about 930 and below hectopaxels. So that also is going to rise the uh, sea level overall a few feet just because there's less pressure on that. And if you actually kind of think about it, you push your hand down on uh, basically something though it's going to be pushed down well, less pressure, that overall sea level is going to continue to rise on top of that. So that all combined is going to create a massive storm surge. Plus on top of that, storm expected to make landfall around 2200 Queensland time. Max high tide is at 2100. So all these com ingredients combined really going to inundate the coastal areas here. So uh, Godspeed for anybody right along this region here. Uh, definitely going to be seeing a very strong storm surge. So I, I do know that uh, mandatory evacuations have put out here in Cairns and Innisfail. Uh, as far south as Townville though, some evacuations down there as well. Even though you are under mandatory evacuations and you have a place to go that's farther inland, please do so. Uh, it is starting to get to that point now where if you do want to plan on going all the way as far south as Brisbane and let's say for example you're in Townsville it's kind of getting too late now. Please uh, locate yourself in a reinforced structure and kind of stay away from the windows as this system continues to make landfall but I can't stress as much 
Uh, and I, I've been trying to put off how not to panic with this system, but I can't stress how much it is very strong, very intense. And uh, a lot of these uh, areas down here never seen in recent memory a cyclone uh, this strong. So uh, thank you for everybody that continues to listen and getting the word out there. Please pass this along to your neighbors, all this information here, because it's very vital and a bit possibly even life-saving uh, if you kind of pass to any of your neighbors in this low-lying area the size of this storm surge and the max amount of winds that's going to be happening right here just south of Innisfail if the storm does continue along its current track. Uh, I keep on saying if because also we still have that cone of air extending right about here all the way down to here and also usually right after landfall systems tend to turn slightly to the right do a little wobble it per se due to friction basically that friction pushes off to the right so cans you're still possibly going to be seeing that eye wall and uh, Innisfail definitely going to be still seeing that eye wall over your area as well so no one's out of the blue in this entire or, no one's out of the clear here in this entire area as far as seeing that destructive force wind. And ending you here with this uh, enhanced IR shot, the enhanced infrared shot, it kind of really gets the point across on how strong this storm is. Even that eye, very well defined here, has already gone through its eye wall replacement cycle, which makes it even stronger as an inner, wire, uh, inner eye kind of gives way to an outer eye wall. So that just makes the storm that much stronger here. So uh, thank you for listening through this entire update. I will try to have another one here in the next uh, five to six hours as well and also uh, please continue to monitor the Bureau of Meteorology so uh, Godspeed anybody out there that if your electric does go out hopefully you have a uh, a uh, weather radio or anything with batteries with it you can kind of still continue to monitor the situation through your no local resources there but uh, as far as any evacuations please uh, be precautious don't try to ride this one out because it's going to be very strong if you're within some of those local areas where this is going to be making landfall and uh, also solar watcher on uh, YouTube here as another video as well. It's pretty good with also scientific analysis on this storm uh, as well here. So uh, thank you for listening though. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can always post them here. I'm always trying to make this video better and I really uh, thankful for all the people that are sending me links as well to try to make this system better. Uh, and there's a couple resources I'm putting in the description box below here as well if you're looking at YouTube that have some resources to storm surge maps and evacuation areas if you know anybody in this area or if you are in this area and are kind of curious about some more information there as well. So uh, thanks again for listening. Uh, be safe out there, and I hope everybody uh, makes it through tonight well, safe, and no one's injured or nothing out of the system. So uh, thank you. Bye.